Perfect, that would be awesome. Right. Yeah. So hi everyone, uh, it's so great to be here and to see you all. Um, as Lexi mentioned, my name's Haley Fargo. I work in the libraries and I'm excited to chat a little bit about what the libraries are up to. Just as a reference, I'll put it in the chat. If you'd like to see the slides on your own, I do have a bit.ly link that you can go to these on your own computer. So if we jump to the next slide, uh, a little bit more about me. So I've been at Penn State for four years now and in my role, I like to think of myself as a liaison, a coordinator and an advocate. And my role is really to think about in the libraries, um, what are you all as Penn State students doing outside of the classroom and how can the libraries be more involved in these types of experiences? And so in this position, I get to work with groups like yourself and other stakeholders um, at the institution like the Student Engagement Network, the Office of Undergraduate Research and Fellowships and Mentoring um, and other units. I get to work with all of my library colleagues across the Penn State system in a coordinator position. And then I also get to advocate for students um, both within student employment opportunities in the library, but then also thinking about um, other things that the library does for you as students. On the next slide, we're also thinking, or th something that I really care a lot about and think about as I do my work is trying to better understand what the Penn State student experience looks like. Uh, and once I can kind of have a, a better understanding of what that is, especially in these pandemic times, thinking about ways in my position that I can leverage and amplify your experiences when making decisions, both for library programs, services, and initiatives that I get to work on with my colleagues, but then also thinking about the other spaces I get to occupy at the institution and how I can bring in your experiences to make better decisions in order to make sure that you all um, have the things that you need to be able to do the things that you want to do. So with that, I really want to talk today in my couple of minutes about kind of the libraries in during this global pandemic. So I think when we think about what the libraries have done on the next slide, we've got uh, this idea that we are keeping uh, people safe, but also making sure that you have access to the resources you need. So when we pivoted in March to being online, um, there were lots of vendors that were opening up services for um, you know no charge, there were textbook, um, platforms and different things like that. And the libraries, um, I think, did a really great job of keeping up to date web pages so that you all could access that information. And those pages are still dynamic pages that we update on a re really regular basis. And then also work with other stakeholders at uh, Penn State that are updating other websites related to, um, you know, keep learning, keep teaching, and making sure that all of those are on the right track. Um, when we moved to online in March, the library also reallocated funds to really think about electronic resources um, when possible. That wasn't always possible for everything based on copyright and licensing, but we did our best when possible to move to electronics so that you all had access to the things that you needed, regardless of where your location was. Um, when we started reopening back in August, we started curbside pickup that we still do today. We processed all the materials that got returned during the lockdown, which was over 10,000 items that our team processed in a matter of about 18 days, and then continued and restarted interlibrary loan services again to provide that access to our students, faculty, and staff. Um, we also, as we reopened, thought about managing space um, in terms of being able to reserve study rooms, what spaces in the library are open. And this happened both at Petit Paterno and also across the Commonwealth. Um, so at some of our Commonwealth libraries, you can reserve a seat. And so students have a spot that they can go to do class or do work. And they know that that spot is theirs. So they don't have to worry about the library being too busy or full or things like that. I also think that really gave us a chance to be innovative. And so if you've been in Petit Paterno, if you're on UP's campus, you might have seen our virtual um, welcome desk. So we've got our staff that are zooming in to um, the desk space and they're able to answer patron questions and still do their jobs, just they don't have to be physically in the building. I think at the end of the day, the libraries are trying really hard to keep you, our users in mind uh, and continue to pr provide access regardless of your location um, and what you need to be able to do your work, um, both for, for class and then also things outside the classroom, but also at the same time managing to keep our folks safe and to follow different protocols and guidelines to make sure that we are doing the best that we can in the pandemic um, and also making sure that everyone stays safe in the process. I think the other great thing that happened on the next slide are think some of the programs and initiatives we were able to do um, in this virtual setting. So the image on the far uh, left is of a zine, which is a self-published magazine kind of book that you can create. And we've partnered with student clubs and our special collections to make packets of zine materials. We send them out to the students so they can come pick them up at Petit Paterno. Then we get together on a Zoom call for an evening, an hour and an evening, and we get to make a zine together, which has been really fun. 
We've also taken services like our search bar, our suite of peer to peer um, and events like our open house, which usually is our signature event in the fall semester. And we've been able to make those available online. What's been great about the search bar and open house is now it's available to any Penn State student, regardless of the campus, which I think is really amazing. We also continue to give out our undergraduate research award this past spring, and we did that online, which is really great to be able to kind of fit into everything else um, as folks took events that were supposed to be in person and made them available online. And then there were some things in the library that just kept going no matter uh, what was happening in the world around us. So we still continue to offer a lot of workshops related to undergraduate research skills, um, which are really exciting. Um, and we have a similar series for graduate students um, and other faculty and staff that are doing research. And then we also have our short edition dispensers. And although our dispensers are not getting as much use uh, this year as they have in the past, we've still been able to do contests like our witching hour contest, which just wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Um, and we still had 53 submissions, which is a great amount of spooky stories um, considering uh, the fall semester overall. So lots of great things in terms of events and services. Uh, the other thing I wanna highlight on the next couple of slides are just some of our digital exhibitions. So this one is Earth Archives. Um, it's talking about sustainability and the environment specifically at Penn State. And so our special collections team have been able to make a lot of really great online exhibits, which has been a cool, innovative way we've been able to still do our work um, in this virtual setting. Uh, on the next slide, we have our ADA celebrating uh, the anniversary of the ADA at Penn State. Again, lots of really great resources from Penn State and our university archives. And then we most recently launched um, another digital um, exhibition on the next slide that is talking about um, representation in American politics uh, focused on Black and African Americans coming from our Bloxon collection, which is African Americana and the African diaspora. So that's a really great exhibition. Again, if you click on that bit.ly link I put in the chat, you can actually go to these WordPress sites. Um, there's a lot of really great resources um, that I don't have time to talk about today, but just wanted to showcase. Um, and then then also thinking about the library, I think one thing I've been thinking a lot about is space. And so on the next slide, we think I think about the library as space. And in the pandemic, we've really had to refocus that to think about all the other things I think the library is able to do. And so I know that in the past, we've worked with you um, as UPUA uh, for different physical things in the building, um, but I would encourage us all to think about us as collaborators in this virtual space as well. So on the screen are all questions that I think about regularly and try to create programs and services to meet and have those conversations. So as a librarian, I think a lot about how information is created, distributed, it, who gets to publish it, who has access to it, how do we make choices about what we consider authoritative, um, and especially in 2020, information has been really vital, really important, and people have been having a lot of conversations, and so the library is here to keep having those conversations. Um, also, the library in the past has done a lot of Wikipedia edit-a-thons, which are one of my favorite events to run. Um, but as we think about Wikipedia as a really um, important source that we use when we get started with research or just trying to find out new information, um, it's good to know that uh, most people that edit Wikipedia are usually white guys. And so trying to find new ways to add knowledge to Wikipedia um, and increase that representation. Um, and then the last bullet point, I know that you all have been talking about search engines um, as well. And that's something that librarians think about. Um, how do we find information? What does it mean to be uh, in a capitalist society where different uh, results are ranked in different ways? Um, and how do we kind of navigate that space and that information? So if any of those ideas are interesting to you, you want to talk further, you have projects within UPUA you want to explore, uh, let me know because I'm always happy to collaborate. Uh, and then uh, I have two more pieces uh, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, this is a shameless plug. If anyone's looking to take a class uh, next semester about research and information, uh, this is a new class we put on the books last December called LST 250. Um, it's peer tutoring and research, but it's a deep dive into the research process. Myself and another colleague teach it. It's gonna be a great class. So if you were jazzed by any of the questions asked in the previous slide, this would be a great class to take to dive into that. And then finally, I did want to announce, you might have seen it, that we do have a new Dean of the University Library. So Faye Chadwell will start on March 1st, 2021. Uh, and we're really excited. Uh, Dean Dewey has had a phenomenal tenure tenure at Penn State and um, we are wishing her well on her retirement and also really excited to welcome Faye um, and start kind of a new era of the University Libraries. And so, with that, the last slide I have is just my contact information. Please get in touch. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. And I am gonna open it up for questions then. So thank you so much.
All righty. Um, with that, are there any questions for Haley? Representative Bose. Hi, Haley. Thank you so much for coming in, Aaron Bose at large. Um, I was just wondering in um, like the two weeks between Thanksgiving break and um, winter break, is there anything in specific that the library is gonna be looking um, to give as resources to students? Great question. Um, so we will still um, be open. So if folks are around in State College and still need to access things um, in the library, they can. Um, we will also be relaunching our virtual de-stress fest. So um, in the spring semester, we made uh, a website landing page with different activities and things you can do away from your screens um, to kind of decompress and get ready for finals. So we are in the process right now of adding new um, and exciting things and then reopening it up so that if you all need a little break from studying in those last couple of weeks, we'll have those as well. Also, before I ask for more questions, our executive director records is saying, giving you a shout out in the chat if you didn't see. <laughs> um, are there any other questions for Haley? All right. Seeing none, again, Haley, thank you so much for taking your uh, Wednesday night to present to us. Um, feel free to stay, but our meetings do run long, so feel free to jump off if you'd like. Um, but again, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. And with that, we will now move on to Open Student Forum. Is there anyone here for Open Student Forum? Representative Scalzo. Number one, I want to just want to point out there's someone in the chat. Uh, number two, uh, Ryan Lascalzo, College of IST. Um, I just wanted to pass along a message from one of my uh, people I represent who couldn't make it. Um, they just wanted to uh, get us aware of uh, they have an issue with uh, CAPS is accessibility to students that are international and out of state. Um, I know that CAPS has come and talked to us before, but they, um, my, the person I'm talking about, really just wants us to help focus on getting resources to those students and figuring out ways to work with CAPS to help them. And I think it's an important thing to bring up, especially as we're entering into um, the break and as well as I think was it we, uh, was it last week we passed uh, mental of uh, legislation on um, mental health? So I think this is to say, yeah, sorry, they just wanted to bring awareness to all of that and make sure we stay cognizant. And then I also, uh, Representative Reynolds, when you asked for the open student forum question, did you want to clarify what you mean by that? I'm just. Oh, I was, I, I was just referring to the same thing as Representative Lascalzo, that there was a, a student who had a question about libraries specifically. Oh. Yeah. Oh, goodness. A feature we haven't utilized yet, question and answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so actually, um, Chair Rodriguez um, has been working on something um, actually last year. It was interrupted by COVID, and I believe it's ha actually ha coming to like fruition in January and it's something called First Generation Lions. It's specifically an initiative that is targeted towards first generation students and resources towards them. Um, so the Committee on Justice and Equity has been working with that with Chair Rodriguez also heading that. Um, so that's something that's definitely um, going to be happening. But yeah, so sorry, I haven't gotten a Q and A in a very long time. <laughs> All right. And with that, is there anyone else here for Open Student Forum? All right, seeing none, we will now move on to a report by the President, uh, President McKay. Hey everyone, I'm trying to, oh, there we go. Cool beans, I had a cat jump up, got a cat, exciting times. It is truly 
truly exciting times. Meow. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. It is great to see all of you tonight. I hope that you're doing well and staying safe and healthy. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Haley Fargo for coming to speak to us tonight about the libraries um, and all of the different ways that the UPUA can work with them. Um, I'd encourage you to reach out if you have any further questions or find um, new ideas that might spawn from that presentation. I'd like to thank a moment and thank each and every one of you who exercised your right to vote this past Tuesday, uh, as well as those who helped others exercise that right too. I'd also like to thank, just on a, I guess, a special note, the county commissioners for all of their hard work in helping ensure that every uh, vote counts. Your work over the last few weeks, civically engaging our students, whether by working hard to piece together an informational voters guide for students to facilitate COVID safe voter registration events and an election day celebration outside of the hub and to get students to and from their on-campus polling center utilizing one of Penn State's blue buses. Um, you have truly done your best to help students have their voices heard. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. Thank you for all of your hard work. As we move on towards the primaries, let's be sure to keep up that civic engagement on the local level too. There's no such thing as an off year. Uh, major congratulations to the committees on facilities and justice and equity for their hard work on What to Fix Day 2020 and the We Are Still Here speaker series, uh, respectively. From what I've heard, uh, these events have been very successful and I'm very proud of all of the effort that you've put into it. I am also very proud of Executive Director Zhao's work to mobilize a table garnering first year involvement outside of the hub earlier this week. I met the first year students earlier, um, it was on Tuesday, and was absolutely humbled to hear about all of their experiences as they left high school and came to University Park. One of those students in particular was actually in the hospital where the first case of COVID-19, at least in New York, had been reported. Uh, these students truly do have incredible stories, and I hope that each of you here uh, will utilize the new member contact, or I guess the total member contact, in the uh, Teams channel to help to get to know them and help them feel a little more welcome in the UPUA. I've been working with Executive Director of Records, um, the Executive Director of Records, and the UPUA advisor to establish a confidential reporting form, uh, which would allow members and students not involved in the UPUA to report any type of wrongdoing. Um, that they might have experienced from members of the UPUA to the UPUA's advisor, Barry Bram, as well as the leaders of the three different branches, should they so like. The Department of Records also brought on a director of technology this past week, Joe Locke, uh, which I would ask Nikhil to tell you more about, should he so like. Shout out to Joe and Nikhil. I am sickened by and strongly condemn the actions taken by the residents of 329 East Prospect Avenue, as described in the emails sent to all of us. Uh, and our families by Penn State and the State College Borough this past Friday. For those who don't know uh, or haven't read the email, over Halloween weekend, the property's residents held a large gathering, which resulted in the despicable treatment, mistreatment rather, um, of an underage female student. The student was found lying on a nearby sidewalk, intoxicated and unconscious, allegedly left there by the organizers of the party. Words cannot express how relieved I was to learn that she was treated and has since fully recovered. Um, however, this heartless action, as well as allegations of sexual assault during the same weekend, need to be addressed. Let me be clear, this is absolutely no way to treat any human being, let alone a fellow student and peer. That the residents perpetuating this danger to the State College community would consider themselves contributors to community service or genuine philanthropy, historically core tenants of Greek life itself, is morally wrong. And I'm encouraging any student who has been recently recruited by them to disassociate themselves from the house immediately. In no way do the actions of this house and its residents embody the values of the Penn State community or its student body. On Monday, I urged the borough council to seek further legal action against the property. And I am hopeful that the Penn State administration will assist in these efforts. If doing so will protect even one more of our students from sexual assault, alcohol poisoning, or hazing, it will have been worth it. Until this threat to the Penn State uh, community and State College community is contained, I am urging my fellow students to remain vigilant and look out for one another, as we've always done, as well as to avoid any type of gathering at 329 Prospect Ave, um, as well as to report those that they see happening in real time. The resolution tonight, to my understanding, solidifies that support on behalf of all of the UPUA, and I hope to have yours in it. Uh, lastly, to keep up 
with a little bit about what we've been doing in the executive branch, uh, feel free to visit upua.org and then click on the executive branch tab. We're adding a news section so you can find reports, remarks, statements, uh, and soon things like even uh, brief nomination updates and appointment updates just to help with the transparency of the executive branch. With that, I would be happy to take any questions um, or provide any comments. Are there any questions for President McKay? All right, seeing none, we will now move on to my report. Um, with this previous week, um, Monday, we had a rescheduled meeting, our bi weekly meetings with Damon Sims um, on Monday. And then along with that, um, today we had a student affairs leadership meeting where we touched upon the wellness days. Um, I believe uh, Chair Barangi will actually be the student rep that um, will be serving on the committees for wellness days. Um, that if you want further conversation or um, just advocacy in that area, if you um, want more discussion on the set number of three days, please um, either come to me, President McKay or Chair Burungi, and she will, and all of us will be happy to bring up those points. We did echo our concerns of only three days. Um, however, that has been set in stone, but we've also continued to also say that, that our advocacy will continue and that we're not really going to settle with that. Um, so that is what was discussed mostly in today. Um, for the rest of the week, Zach and I will be attending uh, Board of Trustees committee meetings as well as the full board meeting on Friday, um, as well as the leadership meeting that we have um, with board leadership and the different student governments. Um, so if there's anything that you wanna bring up, I know for myself, I will be bringing up the university land acknowledgement to the Board of Trustees and bringing it on their radar, as well as bringing up the um, climate petition in that meeting as well, since all student governments uh, uh, recently passed legislation in support of it. Um, along with that, on Friday, I, President McKay and I were invited to attend the Multicultural Association of Schreier Scholar. Um, I was, we were invited by Janaya, da Janaya Davis. She is um, actually a coworker of mine. So that was really fun to get that email. And I'm very um, excited to attend that meeting and just, uh, I don't know, learn more. Cause I believe it is, a, um, and I believe she just invited us out of just wanting to, us to learn more about the organization and for future partnerships. Um, and with that on Friday, I also have um, the DA, DEI AVP committee meeting. Um, we are slowly wrapping it up. We are not um, at the finalist yet, but we are getting closer and closer. And it's really interesting th throughout the whole process to be seeing this. So very thankful to have been chosen. And on that last note, as we are coming to Thanksgiving break soon, um, I want to emphasize the importance of rest and taking that rest. Um, my favorite quote, and I'm pretty sure I read it last year at assembly is by Charles Spurgeon. Rest time is not waste time. It is economy to gather fresh strength. It is wisdom to take occasional furlough. In the long run, we shall do more by sometimes doing less. I live by that quote, and I hope many of you also do so over your break. Um, please breathe, please take some time. This is not a normal year on top of it being a school year and top of everything that's going on in 2020. Please breathe. Um, but with that, I will take any questions. Chair Rodriguez. Hi, Lexi. Um, I was just curious to know um, if there was any updates on the selection of a candidate to become the new UHS director. Yeah, I also haven't heard much from this. Um, I haven't heard much communication either. I believe there were final two final candidates. And from what I heard with the screening interviews, there was one favored. Um, there was a meeting last week that, that was canceled. That was essentially like the finalized meeting. Um, but I can reach out to Karen, who's been um, kind of on top of like the, I don't know, the information, the meeting in general um, to finalize that. But um, yeah, I can definitely follow up for that. Are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to liaison slash affiliate reports. If you are a liaison or affiliate and you have a report, please raise your hand. Representative Klipstein. Jacob Klipstein, ABTS. So, uh, Every month, the ABTS has a theme of a kind of event that they're gonna be doing. And this year, the uh, 
theme of the event is going to be uh, the cost of attending college. I just wanted to put that uh, on your guys' radar in case anyone is interested in talking about that with the rest of the uh, ABTS. Um, every month they kind of have like a special discussion and they've launched it in the form of a podcast. If anyone is interested in listening to that podcast filled with the best student leaders across the Midwest, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New Jersey, <laughs> um, then I can send that your way. But they're doing some interesting things. And when they have an official update on when this um, round table is going to be, I'll send it your guys' way. Are there any questions for Representative Klipstein? All right, seeing none, are there any other liaisons or affiliates with reports? All right, seeing none and seeing no old business, we will now move into a five minute caucus breakout. Does anyone else have a pet that joins them for UPUA assemblies? Um, sometimes my dog will come like sit on my bed behind me and bark and cry um, during meetings, but I gave her a spoonful of peanut butter to satisfy her. So she's downstairs hanging out with my mom while she eats peanut butter. Oh, good. I, the, the spoonful of peanut butter should keep him busy for days. Yeah. Hi, Molly. You look at Lake and screen. <laughs> he has her dog. Lake and what's what's the dog's name? Her name's Molly. Molly. Hey Molly. Lake and my dog's name is Molly too. <laughs> oh. My roommate's cat sometimes joins me because her favorite blanket is on my bed. So she'll just like curl up and just sleep. Just, that's all she does. So she's not here right now. She's just out there begging for food, but. Fitz has gotten so big, like since I first got him. <laughs> Dang, Fitz is huge now. Fitz is huge. He's a big boy. Uh, he'll like stretch out on the carpet and he'll, he'll just be like, I, I, I haven't like, I want to get a measuring tape one day just to see how long he is, but he'll just like stretch all of his legs. His dad was uh, 20 pounds. So I'm gonna have fun if he gets any bigger. Um, one of my friends was just in our like our Snapchat group, he was sending us pictures of cats that he was finding like um on like just at shelter websites, like not even in Pennsylvania, and like just sending all of their blurbs to us and talking to them or talking about them. So I don't know. Totally random, not that anybody cares, but the cat reminded me of that. <laughs> I wish I could keep a kitten like in West, but I don't think <laughs> they would be cool with that. I'd do it anyways, but uh, my room's not big enough for the little thing to run around. I think the only thing you're allowed on campus is non-aggressive fish, unless it's a service <laughs> animal. Define aggressive. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I remember reading that somewhere. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I think it, I don't even know what an aggressive fish would be. Perhaps those fish that eat other fish. I don't know. <laughs> what about like a passive aggressive fish? <laughs> you come in late one night from the bars, it's 2 a.m. and the fish just kind of looks at you and gives you a little. If I put a I... small shark in duck pond, is that kind of a fish, technically speaking? It's probably aggressive. I don't know, Mako, what about a Mako? I want to know like how these came about like in Penn State like um, Penn, Penn State dorm like rules and like how they evolved over time like how did they get to the point in which somebody brought an aggressive fish like did someone just have a tank of piranhas and they're just like you can't have well it didn't say it 
I wonder if like two, there was like a situation long, long ago where two roommates thought that you could put two beta fish in the same tank and then that caused a roommate conflict. I wonder. A beta fish fight club in the dorms. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Zach posted somebody... something in the chat about Penn State keeping Penn State squirrels. I don't know about anyone keeping them, but the reason there are the squirrels at Penn State is because some, I think it was like a hundred years ago, someone like introduced like five squirrels or whatever to the campus. And like all of the squirrels here are like descended from those like five squirrels. Wasn't there a girl who used to like dress them? Like squirrels? Yeah, it's always yeah. a girl. <laughs> yes, there is this girl. I think like, it was, was it like two years ago, Emery? I don't know. I, don't, I, I think that remember, was. Just... I just remember reading like an Onward State article about it, like at some point. I, I know what you're talking about. I remember seeing that and she would put it like you think you'd, they would just put them in like a little sweater. But no, this girl would put these squirrels in like full on dresses and like like little hats and everything you could imagine. And these squirrels just like allowed it to happen. Like they were like she was there. Like the queen has spoken. Put on, put on the dress, Dave. Put on the dress. This is really random, but does anybody know how you're like supposed to eat pomegranate seeds? I like peeled a pomegranate earlier and I've just been like kind of popping them in my mouth. But then I was talking to my friend and she's like, you're not supposed to eat them with your hands, but then like hasn't told me how I'm supposed to eat them. And so like, I just have a bowl of pomegranate and I'm not really sure what to do with it. A spork. A spork? <sighs> with your hands. A spoon? That's a good idea, Sydney. Just eat them with your hands with your arm. straw. <laughs> you can make boba tea with it. I was just, just like, going to say it's like boba. I support that. No more tafioca. We're going to use pomegranates now. We're getting, It's going to be revolutionary. Change the boba game. <laughs> All right. And with that... We will now move into new business after a quite intriguing conversation during Open Student Forum. All right, with that, line item A, which is Bill 1015, funding for Thanksgiving break and spring semester return lift code subsidies. Chair Jordan, if you'd like to introduce this. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, my Wi-Fi just cut out. Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, wait, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now it's back. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so just a little background on this bill. Um, it's been a, like in kind of we've been working on this um, for a few weeks now. Um, our new Lyft um, contact has been really, really um, helpful throughout this process. So this goes back to um, 2016 when um, the facilities committee figured out a way to kind of help students get to the University Park Airport. Um, originally, it was just a van and you would have to, um, you know, it'd be designated times. You could only go at certain times, um, certain days of the, the days of the week too. Um, so then we partnered with Lyft a few years later and now Lyft provides us um, codes. So that it's $15 codes um, that basically, if you go to University Park Airport between the November, for this one, it's November 18th to November 25th, um, and you put the promo code in, you'll be able to get $15 off. Um, and it will, I know this was kind of stressed in the past, um, like last year that students were using it for other purposes. Um, just so you guys know, we worked to, with Lyft this year that it will only be for University Park Airport. Um, it's really helpful for them because in the past, we've done 150 codes, but this year we decided to, or decided to kind of go back a little bit to 125, um, just because of COVID, of people not being on campus. So in typically in the past, what happens is we would fund for Thanksgiving break and then for winter break. But since we're going all remote November 20th, um, I'm passing it all right now. So it'd be November 20th for Thanksgiving break and then returning to campus back in the spring semester, which is so far away, um, January 14th, it will begin for the next set of rounds. Um, but just to kind of, if you guys look in the chart, if you had a chance to look at the bill, um, we uh, allocate it for the whole amount of 125 for each trip, um, but we only pay for what we use. So if we only use 100 codes, then we'll only get billed for 100 codes. Um, and then say in the winter, we get 120 and people 
people are still using them. Um, I have access to like an online lift portal from Penn State that we got access to. So I can always look at that, see if we need to adjust anything um, and just kind of see how things are going. But yeah, this is a really great feature. Um, I know a lot of students use to have that kind of free way of they don't have to stress about getting a van they can get the lift when they want I know we're all leaving at different times um different you know days of the week so this is a way for them to go at their own speed at their own pace um but yeah this is something that um facilities has worked on um in the past and I'm happy to bring it to the floor tonight um but I will stand for any other questions you may have are there any questions for chair Jordan representative Lascalzo Ryan Lascauso, Lion Pride representative. I know in previous years there's been a there was a partnership between the UPA and Arsh where Arsh would partially fund um, some of the codes. Um, will that happen again this year, or because of the scaling back, are we not doing that? Um, so to be honest with you, I did not reach out to Arsh for this. I know um, last year I don't believe we did. Maybe the year before that we did, um, but. In the future, I know we're going to do the spring semester, so I definitely can reach out to Arsh then and ask them if they would like to partner with us. Um, something I didn't do that, that this year. Um, but yeah, definitely spring, second semester, I'll look into that. Um, but I did scale back, as I said, so I think that might be better. Um, usually it's 150, but this year it's only 125 for each. But good question. Are there any other questions for Chair Jordan? <laughs> All right, seeing no more questions, is there any discussion? Uh, Lexi, I have discussion, sorry. Um, I just need, uh, Stephen, if you have it to amend the type 40, possible. Just gonna ask for a second for the sake of consistency, cool. And it will be taken as friendly. Give me a second here. Okay, uh, the new type 40, is one two zero one two eight point seven zero. All righty, uh, Chair Jordan. Sorry, Sarah Jordan at large. Um, I have one more thing. Um, so uh, when these graphics are posted on our UQA page, please, please, please share them. Um, it's really important that students know about this service. I know this year is very different, but I think people will be very appreciative of this. So when they are posted, post in your group meetings, group chats, people don't know that this kind of is a thing. So just please get the word out when it is posted. All right, is there any other discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, I'm going to close the floor. And as usual, since this is a bill, I will be asking for a roll call vote. Um, same as usual, please unmute yourself when your name is called and please mute yourself again so there isn't any background noise. But speakers on when you're ready. Arthi Kalor? Yes. Adeline Mishler? Yes. Alexander Wu? Yes. Amanda Bird? Yes. Amy Gary? Yes. Anna Taylor? Yes. Emery Ron Sorensen? Yes. Blake Tolliver? Brian Schultz? Cameron McCogan? Yes. Kara Flegel? Yes. Dan Risser? Yes. Emmanuel Amante. Uh, Manny. Okay, Aaron Bose. Yes. Jacob Clipstein. Yes. Jarrell Gibbs. John Mark Miller. Yes. Joshua Reynolds. Kaylee Quinnen? Yes. Cara DeLucio? Yes. Kelly Snyder? Kyle Quinn? Yes. Lakey Meter? Yes. Lewis Richardson? Yes. Marie Meisner? 
Yes. Maddie McIntyre? Yes. Megan Dalo? Yes. Najee Rodriguez? Yes. Noah Robertson? Yes. Patty Brungy? Yes. Rainier Foley De Fiore? Refugio Lara? Ryan Lascalzo? Yes. Samantha Brown? Yes. Sarah Jordan? Yes. Sidi Deshpande? Yes. Sophie Palio? Yes. I vote yes. And then Sydney Giver? Yes. Tim Tierney? Yes. Tom Doherty? Yes. Sharu Shri? Yes. Eugene John? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know Choi. She votes yes, and she can't speak right now. Uh, was anyone's name not called? Representative Reynolds also had his in the chat. Okay. All right, uh, let me just tally those up. All right, and with that, Bill 1015, funding for Thanksgiving break and spring, spring semester return lift code subsidies passes unanimously, specifically with a vote of 36-0-0. Moving down the agenda with line item B, resolution 4015, supporting the increase of legal action taken against the tenants of 329 East Prospect Avenue by the State College Borough and the Pennsylvania State University. Chair Doherty, if you'd like to introduce this. Hi guys, um, so Chair Doherty here. Uh, one thing that I've noticed over the last couple of years is that these actions that have been committed uh, by uh, the tenants, student tenants of 329 East Prospect Avenue, formerly known as SAMI, Sigma Alpha Mu, um, we have not really took a stance on. And uh, in at least IFC and in the Greek, uh, Greek life, they have been a continued problem. Um, just uh, committing many violations, sexual assault allegations, sexual misconduct, uh, health violations, you name it, this property has done it. It's a worse version of Animal House. Um, and uh, to be quite honest, I, I think it's about time that we as UPUA uh, said something about this. Um, so we are basically uh, calling on um, Penn State and also the State College Borough to take more legal action that, is currently, uh, than, that has already currently been taken um, there have been some like countersuits as to why, uh, like basically it's like lawsuit here, lawsuit there, convert the countersuit. And it's just been a legal mess. And at a certain point, the borough council and Penn State had just kind of given up because the property is privately owned by the alumni of uh, the once formerly Sigma Alpha Mu. Um, in Damon's email sent to everybody, uh, it basically said that we are considering taking that uh, action and we want them to take that action. Um, after hearing the story about the, uh, the girl found on the side of the street, the woman found on the other side of the street, um, passed out, dying from alcohol poisoning, and it was a very cold night, which is something they took out of the email on Halloween. Um, we could have like woken up the next morning seeing Penn State on CNN. And not only this, but it just gives a really bad rap to the rest of Greek life for an organization that is no longer a part of Greek life. Um, so uh, in the end of the recommended course, uh, sorry, in the, yes, the recommended course of action, a really important phrase that I would just, if anyone comes forward, you is talking about this, um, is that uh, the UPUA, uh, second, uh, right. unless visual uh, organizations have been a part of any of the violations committed, I, uh, sorry, the UPUA understands that the tenants of 329 East Prospect Avenue do not represent Greek life. Unless individual organizations have been a part of any of the violations committed at 329 East Prospect Avenue, fraternity and sorority should not receive sanctions. Um, I already went to the Borough Council on Monday and kind of spoke as an individual and as a member of Greek life that this needs to stop. Um, I really do not want to see another mass email from Damon about this property. 
Um, so what we're doing here is just trying to call on more legal action. Um, it, at a certain point, like Penn State and Burrow really have to put their foot down, even if it is going to be a very costly trial. Um, this is just getting ridiculous. Um, there are already talks about it becoming a nuisance property uh, based on the fact that it has so many violations, but also by the fact that they are lowering uh, property values of the uh, houses around it. So uh, with that being said, uh, we just wanna make sure that this is continued and so this doesn't happen again. Uh, and so we are no longer trying to just give uh, small violations uh, and try to uh, get the new members as they come in, but instead we're taking the head off of the snake. Um, it, this house has just become more and more of a problem since I've been here. And uh, we just really, as uh, the student body government have to do something, have to say something. I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Chair Doherty? Representative Miller? Please don't take this in the wrong way. I completely agree that this house is a problem. I just question, I know we haven't said anything in the past, as you've said, uh, and I recognize that this is definitely becoming an awful situation. Just should we be taking such a stance that urges legal action against, you know, a place where students live? I, I, I completely agree that what they've done is despicable. I just... I, I just have a little bit of a reservation there if someone wants to like push me over the edge. Um, the reason why is because this is not only that, but the university has been pursuing this for multiple years. Um, it's giving like all of Greek life a very bad name. Um, a lot of the members in my house were very furious to see that email. And that's why I gave that little thing at the end, trying to say that they do not represent Greek life because that was not really like codified in uh, the email. But um, after, because the situation we are in and because of like, first of all, COVID having a large gathering and the fact that a, uh, a woman could have died um, that night, if like the, when what Zach was uh, describing in his, um, in his uh, proclamation speech, I forget. Uh, but uh, is that the fact that this is like a powder keg, like ready to explode. And if something were to happen, that's going to reflect negatively, not only on the students, but also on Penn State. Um, we, I do not want to hear another story of a student either like getting uh, sexually assaulted there, um, students being um, uh, giving too much alcohol there, underaged. Um, th th at a certain point, it really does have to stop. And I'm thinking of arguing this more in the fact that this is the safest thing for students instead of necessarily just going and getting, they're getting like, let's say they get 10 new members every single new year. Uh, every single semester, let's say that into their ranks. And so if only certain, so if students are coming through and then some, some of them are getting uh, kicked off of uh, Penn, kicked out of Penn State for violations, you're not really solving the problem here. Um, you're just allowing it to happen. Uh, I really do not want to see any more students either there or like get in trouble or God forbid get sick uh, with COVID. Um, it really does have to stop. And this is also the university at the end of the day because they de-recognize them as a fraternity, uh, uh, to recognize them as a fraternity and their international, their national association removed their charter. Um, there's really no oversight that Penn State or the OFSL can have into any of these events to keep them safe. Um, so really bad stuff could be happening and Penn State potentially couldn't, like wouldn't know about it. Uh, the police most likely wouldn't be able to know about it unless reported. Um, at a certain point, it really does have to stop. And I'm doing this and putting pushing this forward for the best interests of students and that this has to be um, th this legal action has to be taken and this has to stop. There also has been multiple attempts by Penn State in the past to push for legal action with the borough. Uh, they've all fallen short, except for this past uh, in 2018, whenever um, basically they're trying to argue that because it's a zone fraternity, whenever a zone fraternity is uh, uh, like kicked off, uh, it can no longer become a fraternity house. And because they're not necessarily a fraternity house, they can't remove them. Uh, they got that overturned by a judge, uh, but they still haven't gone for if any more legal action uh, for the fear of a countersuit. Um, at a certain point, I'm, I'm not gonna put up with it. I, I think that this is putting more students in danger. And uh, just like how we talked about in the beginning, this is Penn State's almost thing with COVID, it's mask up or pack up. Um, if you're not willing to be safe and be responsible for other students, then sorry. Like it, it, at a certain point. All right. Um, Representative Lascalzo, member, this is question period. Uh, Ryan Lascalzo, line pride representative. I have kind of like 
three ish shortish interconnected questions, some of which you might have kind of answered. Number one is like, are they, they, they're no longer recognized by Penn State, are they still recognized by their national organization? Number two, are they still recognized by like the IFC at Penn State? And then number three is just, um, you, if none of those are true and they're, you said they're, I believe they're like, the residence is owned by like the alumni. Is there like an actual, like an organization or like, a, like an actual, like, I don't know what the word would be. Like what's the actual thing that owns the property? Like, is there like an official group that actually owns the property? Uh, yes. Yeah. So first of all, they're, they're no longer recognized by Penn State, by IFC. Um, they are also had their charter removed by their national organization, meaning that they're even their own nationals do not support them. So that's their national organization for uh, Sigma Alpha Mu. And then uh, lastly, for your final, final question, uh, there is usually an alumni board that uh, all collectively own the house. Um, the, what usually has happened in the past is when people get a new house, they have to gather a lot of money because a lot of students can't afford living in a big house. So um, so the alumni board basically decides that stuff. Um, they have been in basically all of the legal arguments um, instead of the students at the properties uh, with Penn State and also the State College Borough. Um, they have not been willing to move on it, um, but there has been like movement at least with on onto their own. But they basically decide how the property is maintained, how the who is in the property, and also handle all the lease agreements. Representative Richardson. Yeah, so my question, and sort of along the lines of Representative Miller, um, I've never seen a resolution sort of come up like this, where, you know, we're sort of encouraging the university to take legal action against a group. So if someone knows of one, I'd, I'd really like to sort of see it. Um, my question is, like, what legal action specifically do you intend to take? Because I, I sort of take issue with the fact that we're encouraging legal action, but we don't actually specifically say what sort of legal action we want to take. Um, it just seems like kind of odd for us to be making a blanket right so if you maybe could elaborate on that that would that would be great yeah so uh what it is it's looking like right now the borough is going to be pursuing but uh they need to be able to get the support behind this uh most likely from the community and they're probably gonna have to vote on this is the idea of making it a nuisance property and what that would do is it would actually remove all tenants until the case is uh the case of the nuisance property is decided um what the reason why we are asking to take more legal action is because in damon and also tom uh fontaine sorry tom fontaine also helped draft this email it says they are considering taking legal action um we want them to take legal action um we're not necessarily we're not the ones taking legal action i just want to make sure everyone knows that right now uh we are just urging penn state and also the borough to take that legal action um they're kind of like iffy on it right now because in the past they have tried to do this and it's just been a very like prolonged process but from what the borough is understanding from what I, I have heard is that if this nuisance property is able to be applied to the property until the case is over or settled then uh no student tenants would no one would be allowed to live in the property uh like as soon as that is established which i would hopefully i would hope would be over winter break um the, the biggest reason that we're not we're not the ones taking legal action we can write an amicus brief if we would like to but as the as a third interested party uh president mccain and myself both talked about this um but we we're asking them to take legal action we are not necessarily saying that we as a, a, a the university park uh university park student government for the undergraduates uh we are we are taking that legal action like no we are, we are asking penn state instead of considering it to actually take that legal action um, instead of just considering it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I, I guess I just sort of missed that part, but yeah. All right, and with that, are there any other questions? All right. Seeing no more questions, is there any discussion? Representative Robertson, and just a reminder of the three minute rule, I will be uh, just calling you out if you do tend to go. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Noah Robertson at large. Um, I just wanted to say I, I support this resolution. Um, but one thing that just kind of struck me as odd, uh, which Lewis mentioned earlier, was I also thought that same thing. But the little section that has that acknowledgement that's like, 
uh, the UPUA understands that the tenants do not represent Greek life just feels really strange to me. Um, I looked at like the list of suspended fraternities and sororities on the student affairs website. I see 11 suspended chapters for various reasons, including, you know, not following COVID guidelines, hazing, um, and surprisingly listed on their website, there no, no, there's nothing about like sexual assault allegations or um, violations, which I feel is strange considering like the content inside of this resolution. Maybe that's something we should look into as well for more transparency on that end. But, you know, with so many different chapters of Greek life at Penn State having an adverse effect on members, on community members at Penn State, um, women who face uh, sexual assaults at Greek life places, I don't know, at like houses, and then, um, you know, what we saw earlier in the fall semester with uh, Greek life not really complying with COVID guidelines, it just feels very much like a sentence that says, you know, it, it, it's almost analogous to like the not all men type thing. Like, of course, it's not all Greek life. It just feels really strange to point out, like, I, I don't know, like, we should be doing this because we support legal action against like these specific tenants. It, tenants, it doesn't necessarily feel like we have to say, you know, this is not all of Greek life. It's, it, I don't know, it's just really strange to me. Chair Jordan. Chair Jordan at large, um, I just want to be full in support of this resolution. Um, I know that I'm a co-sponsor of it, but I also just want to direct those who may be um, still kind of confused about the legal action in the email that was sent out to all of us in the third paragraph down. It just says that the borough is considering additional legal action and the university has already suspended two students living there. Um, so basically that line in the resolution is just saying that we support that and want them to take further action. It's not saying, I know as Tom said this already, but it's not like the UPA is going to take the legal action right now, um, but just saying that we support that email. Um, it's already been stated in the email that legal action may be taken. Um, so we're just urging that. Um, but yeah, I just wanna say that this is something I think very important that um, every day at Penn State um, kind of has their like eyes on and looks at. Um, obviously, this is something very sensitive. Um, this topic is very something that um, needs to be stopped, needs to not happen. So um, I'm in full support of this resolution. Representative Quinnen. Hi, Representative Quinnen. You know, I'm very sympathetic with this resolution and I think that it's very important to sort of call for legal action specifically against this off-campus fraternity. But, you know, going along with the sentiments that other representatives have stated, I'm not really sure still about what exact legal action we're taking. Um, you know, we've talked about their violations against COVID, sexual assault violations, general violations um, that have you know, augmented over the years. And I think that for this specific case, you know, when we call for legal action, you can't really call for legal action by, you know, to quote the original speaker, say that it's just a very worse version of Animal House and we need to condemn that. Are we condemning them for leaving a girl basically to die on their sidewalk? Are we condemning them for breaking COVID loop rules? Are we condemning them for being a nuisance property? Um, I, you know, I'm reading the, re the resolution right now and it says, we support the increase of legal action. Okay, yes, I, I hope, I would certainly hope that we increase the support of legal action, but is it a support of legal uh, action against all Greek life, against IFC, against university recognized fraternities, just specifically this one? And if so, what does this have to do to support, you know, the borough generally, if we're not supporting any specific legal action? I, I would just like some clarification on that or, you know, just some sort of help to understand what specifically this resolution is going to accomplish. Representative Lascalzo. Hi, Ryan Lascalzo, Lying Pride representative. I just also wanted to come out in full support of this resolution. I personally think this is a really good thing for the UPA to do because um, in the UPA constitution, one of our, one of the organizational charges is that we shall strive to have a tangible positive impact on the student experience and or facilitate efforts towards that goal. And I believe this is like, this property has become a danger to the student body. And I think this piece of legislation, we are calling upon the borough and we're supporting the borough and Penn State in their efforts to increase legal uh, actions against them. Um, as to respond to the last uh, speaker, um, it specifically says in the title, it's against the tenants of this particular property. There's the clause saying that it's not against all Greek life, it's against this property. And it's very specifically saying it's, you know, they're not even considered Greek life by Penn State or by the IFC. 
because they got kicked out for being so bad. And also to respond to Representative Robertson's points about one of the, um, I believe they're probably not on the Greek Life website because they got kicked off. Like if you're a suspended chapter, that means you'll eventually come back. But if you're just like completely removed, you're not suspended. Um, oh, they are? Oh yeah. Um, I guess I was wrong then. Um, yeah, but I also think, I just think this is a really good piece of legislation to try to help the students here and make sure that none of us get hurt. Thank you. Representative Bose. Aaron was at large. I'm also in support of this resolution, resolution fully. Um, I just wanted to touch on, um, I believe one of the main concerns is us as an organization and as a student government taking um, legal action against other students. Um, just to kind of give a little bit of history, I've been trying to find the actual wording of the resolution, but in the 13th assembly um, and also in the 11th assembly, sorry, 12th assembly um, with the uh, Timothy P Piazza um, events, we had also done similar types um, of resolutions and, and made some similar types of statements in the past. Um, so this definitely isn't unprecedented. Um, and I do think that ultimately um, we should be advocating for the overall safety. And I think that legal action um, is the most um, required in the situation to ensure the safety of the overall student body. So I'm in full support. So thank you, um, Chair Doherty and Chair Jordan um, for drafting this legislation. Representative Reynolds. Hi, uh, Joshua Reynolds at large. I think it was asked why we include a sentence uh, specifically separating them from the rest of Greek life. And I think there are a few reasons for that. Firstly, it's definitely not the official values of Greek life to promote this kind of behavior. And although this kind of behavior may have unfortunate connotations and overlaps with uh, Greek life, it's definitely not fair to pin this down on all of Greek life, especially because the this is not a official registered Penn State organization. Like this is, is a group of people that have been uh, revoked by their national organization and by Penn State's Greek life to uh, lump them in with the rest of the legally recognized and largely um, law abiding uh, chapters at Penn State is just really uh, unfair and it also detracts and confuses the meaning of this because this is specifically targeted at the uh, residents and tenants of this organization, this specific chapter, this group of people who committed this act, not at all members of Greek life who had absolutely nothing to do with this. So I, I do think it is good that we included this sentence in there. Representative Richardson. Yeah, I would just echo my se sentiment that I sort of listed in the chat. Um, as of right now, I don't feel comfortable supporting this amendment uh, with my vote until we specify what sort of legal action in the actual wording of the, you know, legislation. Um, my reason for that is because, you know, right, this legal action can take any sort of form. Um, I don't think as students, we should be encouraging legal action be taking against fellow students unless we know exactly what that sort of entails. Um, I'm totally on board with the, the sort of justification that Tom provided. I think that's, that's definitely something that we should encourage. Um, I would just encourage sort of an amendment. And again, I noted that like, I don't really feel comfortable making that amendment because I don't really think I can phrase it. So just a thought. Representative Wu. Hey guys, um, Alex Wu with Peter Caucus. Uh, so this is just kind of like a longevity thought, um, but if something like this were to pass, um, I think it would be important for us to keep in mind that uh, we should apply this like uniformly and un uniformly and like objectively uh, to other other potential um, violations as well. Uh, because my fear would be that we pass something like this and then in the future if something like this happens and then we don't speak on it. Uh, so I think that if we agree to follow through with this that we need to have kind of like an internal agreement that whenever this happens, we do the same thing. Representative Ron Sorensen. Um, Representative Ron Swanson at large. Um, I actually I actually wanted to say like pretty much what Representative Wu just said. Um, and 
for that reason, um, I th I would actually like to motion to strike the sentence where it says the UPA understands that the tenants like that set like that section. Um, I don't think it's relevant, and I think that in like in the future, um, it would be an issue if we were like, oh well, we know like not all Greek life is that way. Like Representative Robertson like put it perfectly, like not all men. Like I think that that is exactly the same thing. <laughs> like this does happen in other Greek life um houses like it's like a country like it's a nationwide issue that in Greek life sexual assault and alcohol poisoning run rampant like that's a thing so I don't think that we should like it's necessarily our place to say oh we know that this isn't something that Greek life values because like quite frankly one might be able to argue that it is um and in the future it might prevent us from do like making a resolution like this so yeah, just mo I have, like an official motion to strike that section. Guys have a point of information real quick. That's okay, Lexi. Um, uh, Greek life is a very big umbrella term to just remember before we do this. Um, so we, it talks about MGC, MPHC, uh, Panhel and IFC. So not all of the, those organizations and the individual orgs own a house or social. So, or are registered or they, they follow socials. So I, I, I guess I'm a little bit torn on this. I, I guess we, we can allow, I, I guess allow the assembly to vote on the, or if like that, that's more discussion we should have on that amendment. Um, or if it's just too confusing, we can just strike it all together. Um, but it does, that is an umbrella term. So when we, we are making these claims, let's just make sure that we understand that there's also three other organizations beside IFC that are a part of that. Okay, so we're specifically on the motion to strike um, the portion that says this does not re represent all Greek life. I can't really see because it's really small, but that's essentially what we're talking about is that motion. Uh, Representative Ron Sorensen. Um, Representative Ron Sorensen at large. So like I would like I'm talking about the whole section because then it follows it up with something that I feel like is kind of common sense. Um, is unless individual orgs have been a part of any of the violations committed at 329 East Prospect Ave, fraternities or sororities should not receive sanctions. So like, yes, it does use Greek life as an umbrella term at the beginning, but then it goes in and specifies fraternities and sororities. Um, so the only people who would receive sanctions like that are people who have the capabilities to social or like things like that. Um, so that's like, I understand what Representative Doherty is trying to say, but it just feels like unnecessary and kind of like fluff. Um, so yeah, that's like just another, like I I think that it is specific enough um, and not just an umbrella term. And even if it is an, like it is an umbrella term, but even more reason than like, like it's common sense and doesn't necessarily belong here. Representative Reynolds. Representative uh, Joshua Reynolds at large. I agree with uh, Representative Brown Sorensen on the point of, I don't really see why we should necessarily have to specify that those that were not involved should not be sanctioned. I would hope that that's just understood. I still, uh, this is kind of a point of information or whatever. I have a question. Has Greek life, has whatever um, overarching body they have, officially condemned and denounced this i mean has have they taken any action have they taken any steps to try to prevent this from happening have they done anything to uh try and discourage students or their own members from engaging with this group um point of information can i am i allowed to do that lexi um yeah no i'm uh, allowing you to Okay, uh, Greek life, um, uh, unfortunately, because the university uh, and OFSL is officially like they're no longer a fraternity at Penn State, they actually do not have the jurisdiction as the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life to either like check out that property or condemn it. It is actually up to the university at that point because um, now you're dealing with national orgs and that's above OFSL's pay grade. Um, uh, just not the pay grade, but like what level that they, they're allowed to do. Um, I, I currently do not know if uh, the OFSL has the Office of Attorney and Sorority Life, sorry, um, if uh, they have sent out an email or, or condemning that, but I do know that that is the university's place, if I'm correct at this point, is much, much likely the reason why Damon uh, Sims sent out that email. As a reminder, we're on discussion of the motion to strike. Um, Representative Byrd. 
Representative Bird, uh, College Birth and Mineral Science. I am in full support of this amendment. Um, I think just from a logical reading of this, of the nature of the situation, throwing in lines 52 to 56 in the RCA don't particularly make sense. Every single paragraph talks about this 329 East Prospect Avenue. There's no mention of Greek life as a whole anywhere in the nature of the situation or any like where that we're implying that this is representative of that. So I just think like logically it doesn't make sense or fit in with the RCA. And lastly, Representative Robertson, I'll be closing the floor on discussion on this motion. I know Robertson at large. Um, I, I also agree with Representative Bird. And I think like anecdotally that the situation is, you know, somewhat representative of Greek life at Penn State. I mean, like there are so many statistics and anecdotes surrounding students' negative experiences with Greek life in terms of, you know, hazing, sexual assault or misconduct, et cetera. I understand that this resolution is simply about this specific suspended fraternity, but I think using that, like this language, like those lines and that type of rhetoric almost excuses those Greek chapters that also engage in similar behavior. And so I would support Representative Brown Sorensen's amendment as well. All right, with that, I'll be closing the floor. Um, as usual, I'm gonna release a poll. Give me a second. Um, I don't know the exact quote. So the what it's gonna say is motion to strike portion that says this does not represent all Greek life. Um, by saying yes, you are in agreement of striking that portion from this resolution. By saying no, you want it to stay in the resolution. And by abstaining, you just simply don't have, you weren't present for discussion or um, there's a conflict of interest. But with that, I'll launch the poll. I won't give it much time. Can you guys see it? Yeah, okay. Um, won't give it much time, so. I think a couple of you need to vote. So I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds, but please, if you haven't already, please do. And these are only for representatives, keep in mind. Representative Miller, feel free to message me directly your um, vote if you can't see the poll. It specifically asks motion to strike portion that says this does not re represent all Greek life. Um, not necessarily for um, Rep Representative Robertson Robertson's question in the chat. Um, I don't think so, just because it also is a very large portion of the student body. Um, I don't want to just, I don't think that's a conflict of interest per se, but yeah. All right, with that, I'm going to end the poll. With that, the portion will be struck, struck in. That always messes me up, but that will be taken out of the resolution as 18 voted yes, 14 no. All right. So that has been removed. And now we are back in discussion on the resolution as a whole. Is there any other discussion? Chair Doherty? Um, just on uh, Lewis Richardson's, uh, Representative Richardson point about what legal action would be taken. Um, so I'd like to amend uh, like for an amendment to uh, support of legal action uh, taken uh, by the State College Borough. Um, so under that line, the support of a lawsuit taken by the uh, uh, support of a lawsuit taken by the State College Borough and the Penn State administration uh, that will lead to a nuisance property um, that will lead to the property being sorry, that will lead to the property uh, becoming a nuisance property. Can you just put that in the chat so I can also just copy and paste it? I see a second. Uh, we are now in discussion on that motion. Is there any discussion? We can also just, if I don't see any discussion, that means people just wanna vote. And for those who may be a little confused because that was really quick, um, Chair Doherty just proposed an amendment to, or a motion to change the title, I believe, to the specific legal action. 
and I'm also just waiting for from chair to wordy. <laughs> but take your time. No. I <laughs> could. can never be a secretary. All right. Okay. Uh... In the meantime, if there's any discussion, please feel free to. All right, so the official motion is uh, for under, uh, like right after supports in line 41, uh, supports the le uh, a increase of legal action resulting in a lawsuit that will lead to the property becoming a nuisance property by the State College Borough Council and the Penn State Administration. Okay, I do see a second. Let me just get the poll ready. Um... And I didn't see any discussion, so I'm going to close the floor for discussion. Let me just get the poll. All right, let me specify the vote. So motion to change title to the increase of legal action resulting in a lawsuit that will lead to the property becoming a nuisance property by the State College Borough and the Pennsylvania State University. By saying yes, you are support of this change. By saying no, you want it to keep it the way it is. And by abstaining, um, there's a conflict of interest or you do not, or you weren't present for discussion. I'm going to watch the poll and you again not giving it much time so please vote when you can and this again is only for representatives to vote like we're changing the official title as well or chair doherty was it the title you wanted changed or just in the resolution i was just looking at line 54 but if someone would like to motion to have that added in it'd be a very long title but it does go into more detail about what the legal action that we're asking for is in the recommended course of action. So if anybody else would like to propose that, um, I don't know where we're all feeling with this. We need to vote on this since Tom's a co-sponsor of this. Technically, yes, just because not everyone would be in agreement since this is a large change. Um, I'm not really... We could do unanimous consent if that is something you guys want to do. But first, before we do that, is there a motion to change the title or keep the title and just change the RCA? Because I will just, I will also then change the wording in the poll. Um, that was my bad. I think it would just be um, best to keep it. I mean, it, it explains legal action in the RCA. Um, that would probably go on for a little bit, have the whole paragraph of the title. I'm not okay. good at making sure. So actually, what I'm going to do for the sake of consistency, um, I'm going to relaunch that poll simply because I want the wording correct and people may have been voting for the title change and just want to keep things consistent. But give me a second as I do that. Um, Sorry, I got to change it in real time, so it's not super easy. Um, oh, geez. Okay. Zoom is really not on my side today, so I'm going to clarify. I can't change it physically on the poll, but I can relaunch it. It says, and I hope all of you are listening, motion to change the RCA in line 41 to the increase of legal action resulting in a lawsuit that will lead to the property becoming a nuisance property by the State College Borough and Penn State University. I'm gonna relaunch that poll for the sake of, I had it wrong the first time and I just want to be consistent. If you wanna do unanimous consent, you can, but if you just like to vote and get it done with, we could do that too. And I, yeah, just keep voting. <laughs> There's only a couple of you. I'm going to give it like 20 seconds. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Overwhelming amount is in support of this change. So the resolution, that change will be added to the resolution. And it's not the title is the RCA as I clarified. I just can't change it right now in Zoom. All right.
With that, we are back in discussion on the resolution as a whole. Is there any other discussion? Chair Doherty. Sorry, last time I speak tonight, I promise, besides my report. Um, I just want to urge all of you that if you hear something, please say something. Um, uh, if you hear that friends are going over there, groups going over there, trying to discourage it, um, that uh, this property, again, like I said earlier, is kind of like a powder keg ready to ex explode. And uh, these things only happen to visit this house. So um, please, if you hear anyone being recruited by them, uh, say something. There's a lot of things that have been happening over the years. So please be vigilant. And uh, also please make sure we're looking out for one another. Uh, Representative Palillo. Um, hi, Sophie Palillo, Panhellenic. Really quickly, just wanted to uh, state my support for this. I think it's awesome. And um, a lot of, as Chair Doherty just said, a lot of bad things have happened at this property. So I'm full support of this. Just really quickly, I know, I don't remember who, somebody touched on because um, OSFL can't like say something. I know a lot of individual chapters, including my own, just said a quick thing or put in their chapter meeting notes uh, not to attend anything at this property, report if we see anything. So um, that makes anybody feel any better. I know that it's been talked about, so yeah. All right, and with that, I'm gonna close the floor for discussion. Um, Again, since, a res since it is a resolution, um, Speaker Zong will send the form in the Teams. I will always repeat it, um, go to the General Assembly channel, which is in your EPA Teams, and there is where Speaker Zong will send the form. Um, I won't give it much time, so please head over to Teams as soon as you can. There is a motion to vote unanimously. There is a second. Is there any discussion on the motion to vote by unanimous consent? Representative Tierney. Since you're at large, I'm just going to object it. I think that we should uh, have a vote on it. Not that I'm voting no or considering voting no, but I think it would just be better to have, have an official vote count of where all the reps stand on this issue. All right. Um, Representative Robertson, do you rescind or? Yeah, I can rescind. Okay. So back to uh, please go over to Teams, General Assembly channel. That's where the form will be sent. As usual, I don't give it much time just because I don't want this meeting to last forever. So please head over to Teams. If there are any technical issues, um, please direct message me on Zoom with your vote and then I can include it on the overall count. But head over to Teams as soon as you can and we will announce the vote soon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, wow, if I could talk, I'm gonna give it another 20 seconds and I'm gonna close the form. All right, the form has been closed. Just give me a second to get the votes. All right, and with that, resolution 4015, 
supporting the increase of legal action taken against the tenants of 329 East Prospect Avenue by the State College Borough and the Pennsylvania State University passes unanimously, unanimously specifically with a vote of 39 zero to zero. And with that, we will now move on to line item C, resolution 4115, formally acknowledging Veterans Day and commitment to support the Penn State Student Veterans Organization. Chair Rodriguez, if you'd like to introduce this. Hi everyone, um, Najee Rodriguez, College of the Liberal Arts. Um, hope everyone is having a great Wednesday thus far. Um, this resolution um, essentially, um, again, like Lexi said, formally acknowledges Veterans Day um, and especially celebrates and commemorates sacrifices made by student veterans on this campus, as well as supporting the Penn State Student Veterans Organization. Um, in this, it basically details um, the context as to why um, Veterans Day um, was established and the unique history behind it and why it's so important um, to thank veterans for their service and sacrifice, especially with the unique connection um, that Penn State has as being a military friendly school um, and our enormous amount of um, student veterans that um, benefit and derive their education from this university. Um, just a quick fact that's super vital to understand is 5,600 students have direct military ties as either service members, veterans, or military, military dependents across all of Penn State's campuses. Um, that being said, um, student veterans are a vital component of Penn State's campus and they really do make um, a huge component of our culture. And it's very important that they get the acknowledgement that they deserve. Um, this resolution goes further and um, advocating for the Student Veteran Center um, and alerting um, and advocating for that, um, especially with the programs um, that the center provides assistance for, such as the GI Bill benefits, um, transition to college programs, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring um, and overall counseling. We also give acknowledgement to the Office of Veterans Affairs and Services for students to utilize um, as a service. Um, we also encourage um, students, um, peers of student veterans to join and see what the Penn State University's um, veteran um, student organization is about um, to really kind of immerse themselves in the experiences um, and get to know um, their peers who have served in the United States military. Um, we go further and basically explaining the resources that exist, advocating for these resources, and ensuring that there is a stable um, and cohesive relationship in which we work in tandem with the Penn State Student um, Veterans Organization in the future. We also hope to uh, propagate what this uh, organization does and also the importance of this organization and why it exists. Um, lastly, I would really like to commend um, Representative um, McColgan and Representative Bose um, for working hard on this resolution and helping this come into fruition um, and bringing it by two thirds. I think it's so important and vital that we recognize um, all segments of our student population. And that's exactly what we're doing um, by hopefully passing this resolution in support of our student veterans, in support of this holiday that celebrates them, and in support of the Penn State Student Veterans Organization. Thank you. And with that, I now stand for questions. Are there any questions for Chair Rodriguez? All right, seeing no questions, is there any discussion? Chair Jordan? Sarah Jordan at large, I just wanna say I'm in full support of this legislation. Um, thank you guys for bringing this. Super important that we recognize um, this. Is there any other discussion? Representative Reynolds? Hi, yes, thank you. So uh, um, Representative Joshua Reynolds at large, uh, there is, although most of the events were today, it being 11th or 11 11th, of course, um, there are still some things happening throughout the rest of the week for Military Appreciation Week, uh, chief among them being a scavenger hunt, hunt among downtown restaurants. Uh, the idea is it seems to honor various uh, Penn State veterans and they have, I believe, posters and flags, various things around the downtown specific restaurants to help uh, recognize the sacrifices made by particular individuals from this community. And uh, there are some gift card prizes for those who go to these downtown restaurants and uh, participate in the scavenger hunt activity. So there is an infographic which I was able to get sent to me just a few days ago that I can uh, disseminate to the rest of the EPA for anybody to pass on. I encourage everybody to check it out themselves. Unfortunately, uh, it's a little late for much to be done about the uh, 11th day attendance, 
but I think it is a good step towards building a relationship with them for next year and hopefully things can be planned out sooner in advance. I know um, I was engaged in dialogue with uh, Mr. Eugene McFeely and it was just like a somewhat delayed process communicating with him and then him to the others and then the others back to him and then the, him back to me. Uh, so hopefully moving forward, we can uh, help promote their events more aggressively, but there is still something this week if you would like to help participate. And uh, if you would be willing to have me added to this resolution, I would be very grateful. Thank you so is much for writing that. Is there a second? And I'm assuming co-sponsors take that as friendly as it's just adding his name. All right, is there any other discussion? All right, seeing no discussion, I'm gonna close the floor. Um, as usual, the form will be sent in Teams. Um, so please head over to the General Assembly channel to vote. Um, again, I'm not gonna give it much time, so please head over right now. And if you have any technical difficulties, feel free to message me directly on Zoom so I can get your vote down. We will be with you shortly. There's only a couple of you left, so please head over to Teams to vote. And as always, please message me directly if you're having technical difficulties. I will be closing the form in about 20 seconds. All right, the form has been closed. I will be back with the vote count. All right, and resolution 4115, formally acknowledging Veterans Day and commitment to support the Penn State Student Veterans Organization passes unanimously, specifically with a vote of 35 zero to zero. All right, and moving down the agenda, we will now hear a report by the Chief Justice of the Judicial Board, Chief Justice Shookman. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're all doing well and hanging in there towards the end of the semester. Um, pretty quick report tonight, as usual, from the Judicial Board. Um, we had our typical weekly meeting this past Monday night, um, mainly just going over a few um, you know, internal things. Um, our main topic of discussion was a request that was sent to me on Monday afternoon from President McKay. Um, this request was to allow representative, um, a representative, Representative Clipstein, to serve as both a representative and also in an executive staff capacity. Um, we did discuss and deliberate this at our meeting and did rule on it. However, since then, that request has been rescinded, um, so there will be no further action taken on that. Um, and then my last announcement is that our fourth and final um, community group seat work session will be held this Friday from 11 a.m. to noon. Um, I don't believe that the Zoom link has been sent out, sent out yet, um, but when it is, it will be posted on the JBoard Twitter, which is UPUA underscore JBoard. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the request or any other um, topics about the Judicial Board. 
Are there any questions for Chief Justice Shookman? Representative Lascalzo? Um, uh, Ryan Lascalzo, line private representative. Um, my question is, as usual, about um, how many groups have applied for uh, community group seats? How many have reapplied? Um, anything different from the last time? You, I believe, two meetings ago when you reported on it. Yes, so I do have news on that. Um, I apologize. I did mean to make that a part of my, my weekly report, but thank you for reminding me. Um, we have not received any new applications at this time. Um, we are still waiting on the Panhellenic Council and the Interfraternity Council to apply. Um, as I've mentioned before, those two organizations do have until the end of the semester. Um, so I believe about mid-December, probably about another month to get those reapplications in. Um, and then the other five applications which have reapplied so far being um, the MGC, NPHC, um, Latino Caucus, Peter Caucus, and Black Caucus. We are reviewing those. Um, we do have about one to two judicial board members assigned to each of those organizations. So those justices are responsible for attending the meetings and meeting with the head of that organization. Um, I believe that our reapplication of Black Caucus is almost finalized um, and the other four are already well underway. All right, are there any other questions for Chief Justice Shipman? Um, but, sorry, um, Vice President Papakal, I do have one more thing that I forgot to add in my report. Um, I missed it here at the end. I just wanted to announce that the Chief Justice application has closed as of 5 p.m. today. I believe that President McKay and I will be um, interviewing the those who have applied probably sometime in the next week or two, and then we will share news on that when it um, when it arises. Representative Lascalzo, uh, just wanted to ask how many people applied. Sure. Um, so I believe currently we only have one application, um, but I would also keep in mind that the position of Chief Justice and um, President McKay can speak on this more as well. It is not a position that requires an application. Um, so if President McKay wanted to appoint someone that he thought filled the position, he could certainly do so. The application is really to gauge interest um, and to kind of gain more background into those who are interested in the role. Um, but just do keep in mind that just because someone has applied through um, the application, it does not necessarily mean that the role will go to that individual. All right, are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to executive reports. If there are, if you are an executive director and have a report, please raise your hand. If not, I will keep moving on. All right, seeing no executive reports, we will now move on to report by the Speaker of the Assembly. Speaker Zong. Yeah. Um, hi, guys. Uh, I'm I'm glad that first we're or hopefully taking some time for ourselves and winding down after a heck of a week last week. Um, I'll be looking to host more office hours this and next week in preparation of bringing forward the elections code for for discussion. Hopefully, sometime before the semester ends. Um, for all reps, this means going through the code in one entire like assembly session. Um, you guys can find the official code on our website at upua.org under one of the, the many tabs that we have now. Um, but, but I would encourage going through it, looking and, and seeing what changes you'd like to encourage for the coming year. Um, it typically is a longer discussion throughout our past years, especially going through and talking about you know some of the some of the shortcomings or some of the um, potential injustices in the code. I know a lot of things have flip flop back and forth, such as whether or not we should allow cross filing of an executive and legislative ticket, whether or not we should disclose our um, organizations and, and which ones we are a part of, etc. Um, but I 100% recommend all representatives to at least um, skim through the code, especially even if you're a new representative, um, to kind of see and go through and kind of be like, hey, like this isn't something that's fair for us to run under right now, or this is something that maybe detracts from other communities to be able to run. Um, and of course, you know, while I don't necessarily like personally like the idea of the legislative branch setting the rules for elections, it's what we've historically done. And we need to make sure that um, we are taking responsibility and maintaining the free and fair elections. Um, I'm meeting with 
Christina Baker on Friday for a quick check-in about an article she's writing on, on the Chief Justice application, I guess how I work with the new Chief Justice. Um, I'm also looking to have a Zoom call with the speakers of the other ABTS student governments this Saturday at two um, to be in touch about how they've been running their student governments. Um, and presumably as speakers, we will be speaking a lot and getting a lot of that speaking done. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, I'll also be working with Chair Rodriguez and Representative Lascalzo to, to finalize some of the uh, community group uh, policy changes and, and to clear up some of the issues that the J-Board saw with the application process. I encourage anyone to, to reach out to, to Najee and, and Ryan um, to learn more about the, the policies that, that they've been you know, crafting this entire time, especially if you have any questions or concerns about what's coming up. Um, but I hope that that would also be a smooth process. Um, so that's everything from me and I stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Speaker Zong? Representative Robertson. Hi, I just wanted to ask is like the, um, the elections code on the website, is that like the most updated one. So like, as like the sessions are happening and like changes are implemented, can we like see those changes on the website or is there another doc that we should go to? Um, I have like a, a personal, like small notepad of the changes, but this is like something that we'd have to change and pass as a policy change or a kind of like a reaffirmation of a lot of the things that are in there. So I would say it's the most updated from last year. Um, I don't have a rolling suggestion of changes on there, but I can put everything into a Word doc, maybe share on the team so that people can have free access to and comment as they please. All right, are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we will now move on to comments of the committee, starting with academic affairs. Chair Barunji. Hi, everybody. Um, so. I uh, just wanted to say, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the meeting, um, the test prep book, test prep week books are here, um, several, several, several boxes. So I would really appreciate if reps from AAC or just anybody from any committee can please help me out um, this weekend, like Friday slash Saturday. Um, I know it's going to be rough because it's the weekend. We probably have a game. I don't know. Um, and also, <laughs> and also, um, like everybody's preparing for their midterms, but like we do need to, I will need help getting these books organized for um, the tabling days we have coming up and just sorting through everything. Um, additionally, uh, the graphics will be coming out for test prep week, the actual tabling days soon. Um, right now, the one that's up is for the virtual resources and that expires on Saturday. So if you guys can share that before Saturday so that students can get access to that um, as soon as possible, that would be great. And then share the other ones when they come out. Um, I will be sitting on the Wellness Days Task Force. It's so funny, I actually just got the email with all the info like two minutes ago. Um, so I will be sitting on that. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll do my best to advocate for like the most student-friendly things. Um, hopefully they're receptive. And then also we'll be helping to um, sit on the selection committee for the new undergraduate dean of education. So that's also um, a process where we definitely need someone who's student-friendly um, and receptive. So I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on that. Um, but that's all I have. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And yeah, please help me out this weekend. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll send more information in the Teams. Thank you. Are there any questions for Chair Baranji? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to facilities with Chair Jordan. Hi everyone, I um, hope your weeks are going well. A few quick updates. Um, really thank you to everyone who posted graphics and came to tabling on Monday for what to fix day. Um, we had a good turnout for um, really kind of what it was with everything going on with COVID. Um, so the facilities committee is going to look over them um, on Sunday and then hopefully we will be able to bring them back to the assembly soon. Um, but from what I saw, there were some great ideas. So um, new initiatives coming our way. Um, thanks again for um, passing the lift subsidy bill. Um, that will be starting next week. So please, please, please share that graphic um, when it is posted. It is so important that students know the service um, and just get the word out. 
Um, and then another update is I am working with the prescription Dropbox team as well as Representative Dalo. Um, so we are going to be spreading awareness to the um, uh, Dropbox in Eisenhower that the capstone um, in the engineering department is working on. So um, within the next few weeks, there's going to be graphics posted for that as well. So please, um, see, when you see them, post them too. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I have for you guys right now, update wise. And the other report um, updates are in my, you know, our send that statement to that weekly. Um, make sure you guys look at them because there's a lot in there. Um, yeah, but that's all. I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for Chair Jordan? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to Committee on Governmental Affairs with Chair Doherty. Hi guys, um, just real quickly, um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to meet with uh, uh, Don Hahn, uh, the Massachusetts judge and also former uh, state college mayor um, with the uh, idea of trying to get more implementation for uh, student, uh, sorry, uh, student tenant and landlord, student tenant landlord mediation. Um, that's something that we've pushed for in the past with Gov. Some things have fallen short uh, of just getting there with like rate your landlord. So I'm hoping that we can try to get more initiatives pushed, pushed and also uh, more things uh, available and resources for students that are dealing with a bad landlord, such as myself. So if anyone is interested on uh, in going to the meeting with me, uh, he will be providing lunch. So if anyone is really interested, would like to work on this initiative and would pledge to work on this initiative, um, please let me know. Um, you know, my number is in the, um, my number is also in the agenda. So if you have any questions, shoot, shoot it my way. Um, besides that, uh, thank you so much Aphrodite and the comms team for getting together some of the graphics today for Veterans Day and the events that the veteran services were uh, providing. Um, again, uh, any, any, if any of you family, if any, you have any family members who are currently serving, or if you are considering serving, or if you have had family members who have served as veterans now, uh, Thank you so much, uh, even coming from a military family of my stepfather. I know it's not easy sometimes. So uh, thank you so much and thank you for your service. Uh, and then lastly, some more fun stuff. Uh, I will be hosting a game night tomorrow. I did it with Gov on last Thursday uh, with Jackbox Games. Uh, we All you need is your phone. It will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Just a little bit of assembly bonding. Um, I think it'll be a really fun time. We it, A lot of fun questions and answers last uh, Gov meeting. Uh, with this. And uh, and lastly, the Pittsburgh Steelers are 8-0, so that's awesome. Uh, here we go. Are there any questions for Chair Doherty? All right. Seeing none, we'll now move on to Justice and Equity with Chair Rodriguez. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great Wednesday today and hope you have a even better Thursday tomorrow. But to begin, um, please just make sure that um, for Justice and Equity, um, your last programming event tomorrow will be the We Are Still Hill Speaker Series with Holly Kulago, where she'll be discussing um, assimilative practice in terms of US education and indigenous tribes. Um, that'll be at three o'clock. So please try to make your way there if you can. And just everyone else who's interested in attending, you will be greatly appreciated. Um, working initiative teams have been created via the chats and teams. So be on the lookout for a doodle poll to meet to discuss um, plans moving forward. Um, and action plans. I met with student legal services today and the director of that um, who basically discussed the medical legal predicament regarding free vouchers, which appears to not exist. Um, we'll go more in that um, when we have um, committee meeting in the coming um, few weeks. Um, the next topic is um, Representative both Gibbard, Nieder, Brown, and Dalo will be holding the next meeting of the Women's Empowerment Table next Monday, November 16th at 6 p.m. Please attend if interested. Um, and please, please, please reach out to me if you're interested in viewing kind of the governing documents changes. Um, Representative Rascalzo and I are getting together the presentation to present to all of you. Um, and we're excited to kind of present these institutional um, changes that we'll be partaking in. Um, thank you all so much. And please um, contact me with any questions, comments, or concerns. Are there any questions for Chair Rodriguez? No, well, Representative Robertson. I was just curious, are like the changes um, about the representation like in UQA uh, and like reforming those seats, are there, are, is it like being planned that they're going to be implemented into the elections code for next year? Or is that stuff that would take place, do you think like two years from now? Just like in terms of timeline. 
the changes thus far will be in, implemented um, whenever the J board sees fit as their prerogative. Um, we're intending that the changes will hopefully be implemented, especially with the community group um, reformations um, in the 16th assembly um, to kind of institutionalize that. Again, I'd be more than happy to talk with you um, um, more privately um, to send you kind of the document and that goes for anybody that might be interested just in the interest of time. But thank you for your question. All right, are there any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll now move on to student life with Chair Mishler. Hi, everybody. Um, report from me this week, um, last Friday, a team of reps, um, as well as some exec members, um, met with Damon Sims regarding um, sexual assault surveying um, and, and kind of that history of Penn State um, and some changes that we'd like to see just um, regarding uh, survey reporting in general. Um, if you have more, uh, if you have any questions, I would direct those to uh, President McKay um, or Executive Director um, Aaron Brown, or maybe just Director, maybe not Executive Director, um, with, with any questions there. And I'm happy to point you uh, to them or get you in contact with them. Um, uh, the student fee board, just to give a little bit of, of insight and updates for everyone on that, um, we've just approved uh, some uh, handbook and operational uh, guidelines uh, changes um, and also implemented our new mission, vision, and value statement. Um, so that's super exciting. If you have, or have any questions on what the fee board's up to or where we're at kind of in the cycle, uh, please come to me and be happy to talk to you about that or put you in touch with more people as well. Um, we right now are, are meeting with some entities, um, going over some f facilities types of, of proposals and just generally learning more and uh, maintaining really great relationships, especially in this COVID times in terms of funding, um, as we kind of work towards at the uh, beginning of next semester to hear those formal proposals. So again, any um, questions on that process, I would be happy to provide more info. Um, our SBAP team, as well as our mental health and wellness team, uh, last week officially launched our weekly and bi-weekly meetings. I'm so super happy that we have a space to kind of make progress on a weekly basis there. And huge shout out to all those reps who have taken on that time commitment. It's super, um, it's super valuable and um, I appreciate it immensely. Um, so great progress happening there. Uh, Representative Sam Brown is um, coordinating right now uh, the launch of the Mental Health and Wellness Roundtable, and we've officially reached out to entities, departments, and offices. Um, so if you um, if you know anyone that 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 you think would be interested in in serving on the roundtable, um, and we didn't get to reach out to them for any reason please get in contact with me, would be happy to um, orchestrate that connection. And then also uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be asking for participation from reps as well, um, just to kind of come, uh, you know, maybe not even on a regular basis, just to come and kind of hear the stories and conversations that are taking shape there. Uh, we're, we're doing it in a little bit of a, of a different fashion this year, meeting more um, on like a three week basis rather than um, weekly. So we can have a, a more carried out um, conversation that last over a longer period of time throughout the entire school year to kind of serve students as their needs change on site. Um, Justin Bieber's on the screen. I'm going to pretend like I'm not watching that. And um, yeah, so, so great stuff there. And uh, then also with SVAP, I'm sorry, this is so long. SVAP, um, we are considering um, uh, sponsorships for different speakers, as well as um, kind of orchestrating the carryover from last year of the speakers that we had to kind of set up. So we're facilitating all of that right now. So super exciting things coming down the pipeline come April. Happy that we're on top of those things now. Um, and then lastly, I will be serving on the Wellness Days Programming Committee, um, and that's co-chaired by Dan Murphy um, so just got that uh, in my inbox. So um, if you have anything in terms of the just specifically the programming surrounding um, wellness days, please come to me and I'll be reporting back into my committee with what we think is take, taking shape, um, where we can elevate um, and where there's some gaps where we can do some more programming that that will be helpful for students. Uh, that's pretty much it. And thanks for passing Art with Impact. Pretty sure that's that's becoming a, an assembly mandated event. So I'll be happy to see you all there. Last thing and the most important thing, here it is. Um, we are assembling our panel discussion uh, with university officials as well as some student representation is there as well. 
So if you know um, in any of your organizations um, or just in your you know, uh, groups of communities you interact with, any students who would be willing to talk about you know, their mental health experience or journey, by no means do they need to be any sort of expert. Um, everyone has a story to tell with mental health. Um, and we'd love to have those representative for anyone who would like to share um, to help, uh, help others in their mental health journey as well. Please get in touch with me on a personal basis and we can make that happen love to elevate students voice so if you know anyone please ask reach out and then come to me and we can make it happen are there any questions for chair mishler all right seeing none we will now move on to comments for the good of the order is there anyone here with a comment for the good of the order Representative Bose. Hi everybody, Aaron Bose at large. Um, just two comments. First one being um, the Women's Empowerment Roundtable will be meeting um, next Monday at 6 p.m. Um, we'll have some graphics posted tomorrow. Um, so please share them once they're posted on social media. Um, secondly, for the Committee on Employee Bias Training, um, I did hold that workshop on Tuesday um, I know it was late, late notice, um, so sadly no one was able to attend, um, but if you do have any sort of um, like suggestions or feedback of what you'd like to see in a training, um, please do reach out to me. Um, I'll probably be holding, holding another workshop. I'll try and give a little bit more notice next time, um, but I will be holding one um, just to get some more insight because it is really important that it's, um, I get the most holistic type of comments um, just to make sure that we're getting the, the most amount of representation and the best training that we can. Um, I'll also be reaching out um, to the presidents of the different uh, cultural caucuses, as well as um, the Student Disability Organization um, and some of the religious organizations as well to just kind of cover um, a lot of the different types of diversity. So um, if anyone has any comments, always feel free to reach out, um, but have a great rest of your night. Representative Lascalzo. Brian Lascalzo, Lion Pride representative. Um, lots of LGBT news and events going on on campus this week. Um, tomorrow, there are three things. Um, at 7 p.m., there is going to be a event online where a uh, queer cinema where people watch a movie and discuss it. Um, there's also going to be a um, event called Learn and Listen, the um, where people discuss intersectionality within the LGBT community. That's also online. In person, there is going to be a first year care package making for if any, if, if you have a friend that is a first year LGBT student, or if you are yourself a LGBT student, and it is your first year, and that's going to be hosted at the Center in, of, of Sexual and Gender Diversity in the Hub. Um, November 18th is going to, is, I, uh, what's the actual term for it, uh, LGBTQ plus STEM day in celebration of, uh, LGBT student, LGBTQ plus students in STEM, and it's in recognition of a court case in which student, in which a, where people fought against anti-discrimination anti laws. Um, on November 18th as well, there is going to be a thing with CAPS and the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity on traveling home and being safe if you're not, if you don't feel safe in your community as a queer student. And then the big thing, which is uh, the 13th to the 19th is Trans Awareness Week. Um, there's going, and it, that all leads up to the 20th, which is the Trans Day of Remembrance, Remem which is a day where you remember um, Pe uh, trans people that are killed for their identity. Very sad. Uh, there's going to be a vigil on the on a fa on Facebook. That's usually in person, but due to COVID, it's going to be online. Um, also, in celebration of Trans Awareness Week, the 14th, there is going to be a clothing transit thrift for trans students on the Hub Lawn. I also wanted to say that trans men are men, trans women and women are women, and non-binary people are valid. Um, 
So yeah, go out and support all of those different events if you would like to. I might post something in the group me. Um, I also might write a resolution about uh, Trans Day of Remembrance for next week. Don't know yet. Um, I'm still searching for some resources on how to on some of that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Representative Tierney. Since you're at large, I'll make this really quick. Uh, in honor of Veterans Day, I know we always like to say thank you for your service when we see a veteran, to thank them for their uh, their service to this country. Today, I learned of a, a similar phrase that I think has a little bit more meaning and I'd like to share it with you. Instead of saying thank you for your service, what I'm gonna start saying now is I'm glad that you made it home. A lot of veterans know people that they fought with uh, at war that don't, or that they know people who weren't able to make it home. And I think that's a lot more meaningful and it's a lot more grateful. Um, it's a great way to show your appreciation to them. So I encourage you to just kind of use that little change. Instead of saying thank you for your service uh, to a veteran, maybe try and say, uh, I'm glad you made it home and, uh, and see if they react differently. Are there any other comments for the good of the order? All right. Seeing none and seeing that Speaker Zong has already taken closing attendance, um, I adjourn this meeting at 9.09 .09 p.m. Have a great night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, night everyone. Good night.